Germany, a region fractured into dozens of small and not so small states, in the 19th century, thanks to the results of the Napoleonic Wars, got its chance for unification. My name is Jacob and I welcome you to my debut alternate history video. How did Austria unify Germany? In the game Victoria 3. And I didn't mention Napoleon for nothing, because it was he who solved two of the three main questions. Why unite and how to unite. Well, in fact, he did not solve them, but he had an overwhelming influence. Why unite? The answer was French nationalism. If the French became so cool and went through Europe like a steamroller, then united we can do just as well. Some intellectual from Frankfurt or Dresden must have thought at that time. A bunch of principalities of different size and quality of armed forces in the Holy Roman Empire, united only by the abstract power of the Emperor and then only in the defensive wars, definitely could not compete with big and strong friends. This means that for survival and the development of Germany it was necessary to build a national German state. How to unite? Here Napoleon influenced it directly, destroying what prevented the unification. The status quo. He did this by dissolving the very Holy Roman Empire in the 1806, replacing it with the pro-French Rhine Confederation. Essentially a set of French satellites of varying degrees of dependence, acting as the buffer state between France, Austria and Prussia. Napoleon fed the big principalities with less large ones, which by the way helped the future unification of Germany. Because out of several hundred states it turned out several dozen. And it's easier to deal with smaller number of ones. When he was defeated and the new redistribution of Europe began, it was somehow cringe to restore the HRE. Because it was neither sacred nor Roman and hardly looked like an empire. And no one was going to return the territories taken from small principalities, to be honest. Therefore, on the basis of the Rhine Confederation, as a result of the Congress of Vienna, the German Confederation was created, which also included Prussia and Austria. For the most part, the organization was rather decorative. Well, there was some kind of parliament in Frankfurt, but all the decisions had to be made anonymously, which usually didn't go well. And with that I send my greetings to the Poland-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Of the important there was only a military alliance against an external threat. It can be said that it turned out to be a downgrade of HRE. However, if the HRE had a formal emperor, then the confederation did not. Therefore, the third main question arose. Around whom to unite? Or even so, who will unite Germany? There were two possible answers. Greater German led by Austria and the lesser German led by Prussia. Both cases had their problems. Prussia's problem was Austria, Austria's problem was everything but Austria. But seriously, the problem of Prussia was that it was still not taken seriously and it was not possible to exclude Austria from Germany. About the problems of the Austrian Empire, the main character of this video, as well as the solution, we will talk in more detail. The Austrian Empire at the time of the 1836 was a state stuck in, let's say, the 17th century. Being unaffected by the ideas of the French Revolution and liberalism, as well as becoming the winner in the Napoleonic Wars, having annexed the territories of Northern Italy, the Austrian absolutist monarchy stood firmly on the ground and felt pretty good. At least from the point of view of the noble Londonian political elite, led by Prime Minister Clemens von Metternich, who was an influential person not only of Austrian, but of all European conservatism. But for the rest of population things were not going so rosy. What for some was the standard of stability, for others was a swamp without a way of getting out. The literacy rate was only 34%, the level of urbanization was even lower. The development of industry and the economy was hampered by bureaucratic barriers, heavy duties and the dominance of guilt in the cities. Most of the already small industrial capacities were located in the German-speaking territories of Austria, Bohemia, as well as the relatively recently captured territories of Venice and Lombardy, while the rest of the vast part of the empire was very little urbanized and the absolute majority of the population there were peasants. In these vast territories, in fact, was the problem of Austria. These were not ethnically German territories, which means that they had no place in future unified Germany. Actually, the German population in the entire Austrian Empire was less than 20%. Austria, in turn, was not going to give up these lands for the sake of the still illusory opportunity to unite Germany. In a sense, its imperial identity was built on them. The thing is that Austria was a supranational feudal empire, and how such a superiority of the German people in the doctrine of the state did not exist. Under the imperial family stood the nobles, below them stood their peasants. And it didn't matter what kind of people a nobleman or a peasant was from. For the imperial power in principle there was no significant difference between the German, Slavic or Hungarian peasant. 
they plowed the land in the same way, paid the taxes in the same way, did not ask unnecessary questions, because they didn't know any other life. And it was convenient for the nobility. The issue of communication, and therefore the issue of understanding the language, stood far in the background. In a self-sufficient village, communication occurred only with rare traders and tax collectors. Communication was an urban matter, and the peasant was not expected to achieve economic achievements, but to dug up rotabangas and pay rent in time. Where there is no wealth, there is often no enlightenment, because the second follows from the first and vice versa. In this vicious circle, everyone who wanted to achieve something more than a bowl of mashed potatoes migrated to the cities, to the more developed western lands of the empire, became workers there and assimilated rather quickly. In fact, this phenomenon was beneficial to almost everyone, local industrialists who received the cheaper labor, the peasants themselves, who received a ticket to a better life, and even the nobles of the eastern lands, who did not need to worry about the peasant unrest, because the dissatisfied could simply move. Metternich, on the other hand, resisted such turn of events, because in this case cities, hotbeds of liberalism, would begin to develop, and in the very heart of the empire. But he was unlucky, because the then emperor Ferdinand I, who had taken the throne shortly before the start of these events, in 1835, was much a greater lover of science and industry than his father, Emperor Franz II, who had, by the way, appointed Metternich to the post of the Chancellor. Ferdinand himself was incapable of ruling, mainly due to the constant attacks of epilepsy, so he did not show much passion for ruling and reforms. However, the faction of industrialists managed to convince him to create a compromise solution that would satisfy both them and Metternich. As a result, two documents were signed, the Act on the Development of Cities and the Economy, the main points of which were the reduction of the bureaucratic barriers for business, the abolition of guild production and trade privileges, and the simplification of migration, as well as the act on the creation of the Imperial Guard, which gave the legal opportunity to literally extinguish any unrest in the cities by the force of arms. It is worth mentioning that the action of the first act was distributed only on the lands of Austria and Bohemia. Doing business on the territory of other parts of the empire was still not so profitable. A year later, a centralized police force was also added to the Ministry of the Interior, created for this body, to combat crime in the growing cities. As a result, this led to the beginning of the industrialization of Austria, which later played an important role in the development of Germany. To meet the logistical needs of the growing economy, a few years later, the construction of railways and trains began, which, by the way, Emperor Ferdinand was very fond of. At the meeting of the Cabinet of Ministers, he once said, these iron bulls are able to cover any distance at the speed of horse help and not get tired. Moreover, they are much more comfortable than carriages. We want more of our subjects to be able to take advantage of them. The railway, as expected, spread only in the west of the empire. The Hungarian landowners did not welcome their lane very much, because where the railway passes, industrialization would inevitably begin there. Well, okay, for now let's move from domestic to foreign policy. On that front, things were going pretty well. In 1834, Prussia had created the Germans' custom union, which included most of the German states, with the exception of Austria, the Danish Schleswig and Holstein, and Hanover, which was in personal union with Britain. Austria wanted to enter the customs union, but Prussia did not let her in there, being afraid, I can say that it was justified, that it would subjugate it to itself. Something had to be done about this. This something was the luring of Bavaria the third most powerful German state, into the newly created South German Customs Union, which definitely benefited the Austrian economy. Success. As a result of the Vienna Congress between Prussia, Austria and Russia, the neutral free city of Krakow was created, which was under the common control of these states. It didn't have long to be free. Taking advantage of the occasion of the reform of the local police or the Austrian model, under a secret agreement between Prussia, Austria and Russia, troops were sent to Krakow. Its parliament, also known as the same of Krakow, tried to call on France and England to intervene, but there was no response to its pleas. The occupation of Krakow and its incorporation into the state of Western Galicia followed. Success. Against the background of the inaction of France and Great Britain, Austria decided to seize Bosnia, taking it away from weakened by wars with rebellious Egypt and Russia, Ottoman Empire. The Sultan received an ultimatum and, like Krakow, without receiving support, was forced to accept the demands of the Austrian side. 25,000 soldiers under the command of the von Fickelmont entered Bosnia and met with resistance mainly from Bosnian Muslims, who were afraid of losing the privileges that they had in the Ottoman Empire. Bosnia was annexed. Success. 
Against the backdrop of increasing Prussian aggression against the German countries, their customs union was dissolved, and Saxony joined the Austrian customs union. Success! As a result of the Serbian uprisings in the Ottoman Empire at the beginning of the 19th century, on paper subordinate to the Ottomans, but de facto independent principality of Serbia had been formed. Austria decided to change the ownership of autonomy from Turkish to Austrian. Simply put, take Serbia for itself. The formal reason was the smuggling of Turkish tea across the Serbian border. Austria demanded to recognize the full sovereignty of Serbia, as well as to put customs control on the Serbian-Turkish border. And although even then it was obvious to everyone that the reason was absolutely fictitious, because in Austria then they consumed almost exclusively coffee, France and Russia supported it in its demands, most likely in order to annoy Britain. Turkey was forced to give in. Serbia gained independence. But not for long. Just three weeks later, Austria announced that smuggling was continuing and demanded that Serbia should establish Austrian control over the border. Serbia refused to comply with these demands. Russia stood up for it, seeking to increase its influence in the Balkans, as well as to protect the Slavic brothers in face, and the Ottoman Empire, which sensed the opportunity to get even with Austria. France did not want the strengthening of Russia, therefore stood on the Austrian side. The so-called not t war began. Curiously, the Russians called it accidental war, because in Russian these names are consonant. And in principle, thanks to the power of France, it was easy to win the war. The advance of troops in the Balkans was quite fast, but then Prussia showed up, demanding that Württemberg, which was an Austrian ally, be ceded to it. Austria could not abandon Württemberg and allow the strengthening of Prussia, which at that moment was united Germany by force. But there were not enough troops for the second front. Grandfather Metternich, who at the time was already well over 70, had to seek help from Italy, which had been recently united under authority of the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies. In exchange for Austrian non-intervention in the capture of Parma and Modena, Italy agreed to take part in the war. It's important to note that right before the start of the Austrian-Prussian War, against the backdrop of these events in the Council of the Emperor, the factions of industrialists and intellectuals, taking advantage of Metternich's occupation, as well as the fact that he was the main one in unleashing these wars, were able to convince Ferdinand to sign the draft constitution, disputes over the adoption of which had been going on for several years. The constitution provided for the creation of a parliament with legislative powers, to which landowners were elected, fundamental human rights, the build-up of administration and property rights. Austrian Empire became a constitutional monarchy. Now let's talk about wars. In general, even two wars on paper did not pose a threat to Austria. As I said earlier, France was then the most powerful state. Russia, under Tsar Nicholas I, was mired in corruption and could only dream of an effective army. And there was a numerical advantage against Russia. However, the Austrian command did not consider one important thing. The backwardness of its army. The Austrian army was still using a line formation and using rifles without magazines, while the Prussian army was already using skirmishers' tactics. This, as expected, led to the fact that the Prussian troops stood a step away from Prague and marched on Württemberg. When it seems that Austria would have to make concessions to Prussia, the situation was saved by the peace concluded with Russia in Bucharest, according to which Serbia became an Austrian autonomy, which freed up forces for defense and subsequent counterattack. Russia, expecting a quick war, agreed to sign a peace treaty with the status quo preserved. Success? Rather yes than no. The Austrian generals drew a conclusion from this war and began the reform of armed forces according to the modern model. Rearmament of the army, the creation of single general staff, an increase in the number of artilleries, the replacement of linear tactics of combat with the tactics of skirmishers. It was also decided to increase the number of Germans in the proportional ratio in the regular army and to conduct mobilization in the first place in the eastern lands of the empire, in case of war. And the new war was inevitable. Germany had to be united. And it became obvious that the parties were preparing for it and were only waited for a reason. Such a reason was found. After more than a decade of calm. It was, oddly enough, the project of the diplomatic unification of Germany on the basis of the German Confederation. The fact is that at that time, in the Bundestag, the main and the part-time the only body of the German Confederation, most of its members were able to reach a mutual agreement and approve the program for the structure of the German Empire. More about it later, but for now I will tell you what interests us now. They agreed to unite around Austria. 
Non-allies of Austria supported this idea mainly because of the fear of Prussia, which apparently decided that it was necessary to unite Germany by force. Prussia itself flatly refused this idea, despite the fact that it was even offered to keep the army and some freedom of foreign policy in a united Germany. Prussian Chancellor Nikolaus Habach declared the German Confederation null and void. In response, Austria began to draw troops to the border and announce mobilization. It was supported by Saxony and Russia, who wanted to punish Prussia for aggression in Europe, and indeed to show that it was still capable of something. According to the defensive pacts, Spain and Belgium took the side of Prussia. Most of the German states, although they supported Austria, did not take part in hostilities. Bavaria was busy at that moment with the revolution in their own lands, and the rest just wanted to see where the situation was going. On November 11, 1864, the Brothers' War began. The Austrian command decided to bet on the rapid capture of Berlin and concentrated forces in Saxony. However, although there was a numerical superiority on the side of Austria and the quality of the army on both sides were approximately the same, the quick war did not work out. All the delights of the new methods of warfare were visible. Trenches, machine guns and artillery greatly reduced the speed of the advance of the armies, while greatly increasing losses in manpower. Despite the fact that the distance from Dresden to Berlin is no more than 200 kilometers and Prussia was generally losing, there was no overwhelming preponderance of forces for a breakthrough. On the Russian front, its army even completely smashed Russia's. Only after more than a year of bloody battles, and the battles were really bloody, the losses of killed and wounded by the end of the war on the both sides totaled more than a million people. The Austrian troops managed to reach the suburbs of Berlin and forced Prussia to capitulate. As a result of the Berlin Peace Treaty, Prussia renounced its western lands, on the territory of which the Kingdom of Westphalia and the Principality of Hesse were created under the patronage of Austria. Prussia transferred the province of Silesia to Austria, which, by the way, it had captured during the War of the Austrian Succession, back then in the last century. Prussia, in the event of the unification of Germany, was obliged to become part of it and the unification was already quite close. The remaining small North German states that refused to unite were conquered, despite the support of Russia, whose army after the previous war was a pitiful sight. After many centuries of fragmentation, Germany was united. On November 15, 1866, the constitution of the German Empire was signed in Frankfurt. Germany became a confederal state with large degree of autonomy among the subjects, German member states of the Union. The legislature was the Reichstag, a bicameral parliament whose members were elected through general and direct elections by secret ballot. The Bundestag was transformed into the Bundesrat, representing the interests of the German monarchs and having executive power. The position of the president of the Union, the Emperor, was to be occupied exclusively by the Austrian Emperor. And the Austrian Empire itself turned into the confederation of states created along ethnic lines, dependent on Austria only in foreign policy. Naturally, they were not included in the German Empire. The only exception for some time was Bosnia, which was under Austrian occupation from the moment of its conquest. Thus, the Austrian monarchy was not completely deprived of its non-German lands, and Germany was left without a large number of national minorities. Everyone except the Hungarians, who lost the lands of Slovakia and Transylvania, were satisfied, but they are always dissatisfied with something. This is how a young, ambitious state arose on the map with iron and blood, turning its eyes to the creation of a colonial empire. However, I will talk about this some other time. Thanks to the everyone who has watched up to this point and double thanks to everyone who has watched without skipping or skipping a little. Write in the comments if you want to continue this history of Germany, because I'm not very eager to get out of this deficit budget hole after reunification. And the past of Germany united by Austria will not differ much from Germany united by Prussia. At least until the moment of the alleged First World War. But if the audience wants it, then I will do it. Also leave your impressions about the video and the format in general. I'm interested in your opinion. Jacob was with you, and with that I say goodbye.